Today, I'm going to unbox and set up a Wyon outdoor Wi Fi smart box. Uh, I was looking for uh, a, an outdoor timer that could run my pool pump, which is a 220 volt uh, device. So, I was looking for something. There are lots of uh, 110 volt pluggable uh, timers out there that are smart. Uh, there's a few that are outdoor pluggable and smart, there's very few 220 volt ones that are smart. So I found this one from Woods. Uh, it's the Wyon Outdoor Smart Wi-Fi Box. This is model 50054. So this is the box that it came in here. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, it does uh, uh, 120 volt to uh, 277 volt as well. So that's, that's what interested me in this. Uh, Wyon does have uh, several other devices that I can expand my uh, the smart home switches. Um, I've got several smart home devices uh, in my house, so this will be in addition to what I already have. Um, but uh, this is uh, this says it can program up to the minute, uh, can set up to 12 on-off settings per day. It can also do sun tracking technology, uh, so it can, you can have it turn on at uh, sunset and turn off at sunrise or vice versa. Um, you know, that sort of thing. For the pool, you know, I just want to have uh, something that's going to turn on. I need about five hours a day of my pool pump running to cycle through all the water in my pool. So I'm going to run it twice a day for five hours, so get a little uh, double that. But, uh, um, that's what this is. Uh, let's take a look and see what's in the box. So the box is fairly heavy. Uh, you know, not overly heavy, but certainly uh, more than most of the smart home devices that I've received. And this could be why. It's a, you know, a metal, metal container. That's all that's in the box right there. Uh, so we have um, a set of instructions, which is good. I looked online, I did not find a lot of information about this box. I couldn't find out what it looked like inside. I did see a few people that were using it, but they didn't go too much into um, how, you know, how, it, how it was installed, what it looks like, you know, things like that. So um, that's why I thought this would be a good review to do today. So this is, uh, looks like a set of uh, instructions um, in multiple languages. It's fairly simple. There is an application that you can download to your iPhone or your Android phone uh, to uh, assist you with the timing. And that will also support many of the other, uh, or all of the other Wyon devices as well. Um, so this is the instructions, you know, pretty simple. I don't think there's too much to it. Uh, let's crack this thing open and see what it looks like. So we have uh, a metal plate on the top here on the front middle housing around back um, this is interesting I would expect the holes maybe to come through the back uh, to mount in a uh, uh, you know on your house I'm not sure if these are punch outs that maybe it can I can do that with but um, and then there is the antenna on top um, so we'll see here let's take a look inside Okay, so inside here, um, there's not a lot to this here on the on the face. So we have, uh, I'm not sure, these are probably just jumpers of some sort. Set that aside. We have a um, wiring diagram for a single load and a two load system. Um, yeah, so there we have... Uh, the diagram so it shows what the uh, terminals are. I'm assuming the terminals inside here. Uh, on the outside we have a looks like an LED for power, another LED for uh, Wi-Fi connection, an on-off switch assuming that's for manual operation in case I want to turn it on manually. Um, and then uh, this appears to be a, um, a shield so if I remove these screws I'm going to assume that there's uh, the terminals are, are back behind that. So let me get a screwdriver. I'll remove those screws and uh, we'll see what's back there. All right, I'm back. I have a screwdriver. Take a look and see what this looks like here. Kind of 
hard wrapping around the camera here, wrap my arm around the camera. Okay. Take this off. Yep, just as expected. Uh, here's all the terminals. So here's what we have. So if we look at this, obviously the green is the grounding port. Um, this is uh, L and N. So we have, uh, I'm assuming this is load. So if we look at the, uh, if we look at the diagram here. So this is uh, like a hot water tank that diagram here. So we have um, loads coming in. Okay, so circuit breakers are coming in here. So yeah, this is just jumping across. I'm not sure why. Um, COM2, COM1, okay. So these are nicely shielded uh, to prevent any kind of uh, cross-contamination of the wires there, or cross-linking of the wires. Uh, everything else is buttoned up in here. There's not a whole lot to this. It's a very simple, uh, very simple thing. So. Um, I do not see that there are any punch outs so uh, for the screws so I guess that is the only option that I have is, is this uh, little piece sticking up there for mounting which is a little bit disappointing. Um, I'd like to secure it a little bit better but that's okay. We can work with that. We do have some punch outs in here uh, for the uh, cabling to come in. Uh, so let me uh, do some research on this. I need to find out uh, if I, I believe I've got a two load system, so I need to uh, figure out this wiring a little bit and understand uh, what I'm what I'm wiring up and um, and then uh, we'll come back. I'll show you what I'm doing and we'll go from there. All right, so I've done a little bit of research here and uh, I think I have the plan. Uh, so let me describe what these all are here. So first of all, we have uh, a, an AC uh, load and neutral wire here. Uh, we have NC2, NO2, and COM2, and then here we have NC1, NO1, and COM1. So um, COM1 and COM2 are going to be for your line charge. This is coming out of your circuit breaker uh, box. Uh, if it's just a 120 volt, uh, you'll just come into COM1 and uh, with your, uh, your hot wire. And uh, if it's a 220, then you'll come and bring, uh, usually those come in the form of two 120 uh, volt lines. So you'll have uh, your line one here, line two coming into COM2. So that's how you get your 220, all right? Um, NO stands for normally open, NC stands for normally closed. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm gonna want normally open. So I'm gonna wire uh, my 220 back to my pump. Uh, I'm going to wire one of the um, cables here and the other one here on NO2. In my installation, NC1 and NC2 are going to be um, uh, not used. Okay. Um, so uh, the this this uh, section here, this is where the actual power to the timer unit itself comes from. Okay. Uh, so these are the these are the uh, the line and load terminals. This one here is uh, the timer terminal. So um, in the box came um, came these jumpers, uh, and these are 16 gauge uh, jumper cables. They're not very large. Uh, these are specifically to uh, come off of your line and load uh, to um, power the device. Okay, so. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to bring um, the L terminal here, and we're going to bring it to COM2 here, and we'll jumper it there. And then uh, once that's done, then uh, we'll take the N here and bring it to uh, COM1 over here. And that will provide the timer with the power required. So then we'll have our incoming power from the line, our outgoing switched power to the device, and then the 
uh, incoming power will be jumpered over to the timer power. And that is um, how this thing's gonna be set up. So I need to uh, go downstairs uh, where the pump is and I need to uh, take apart the panel there, get this thing installed on the wall, punch out the uh, stuff here and run the cable. So we'll come back. I'll show you how the uh, setup is going along here in just a bit. This is the pool pump area where I'm going to install the timer. And you can see the pump down there. We have the cable coming to the pump there. We have another one down here which goes to a light fixture that's inside the pool. And there's the electrical box right there that I'm going to tie into. My current thinking is obviously one of these comes out to the pump. I'm not sure exactly which one yet, but I'll find out. Whichever one it is, I'll take it off, move it over, I'll put the new timer box right here next to it so that I can just take it out of this clip, move the, the uh, outgoing cable, the, the load cable out over to here and install it. So then I'll need to come out, whichever one I remove here, come out of here with some more flex conduit into the timer and uh, that'll provide the power. If I open the box here, Pretty simple installation. This we have is the 220 volt uh, circuit for the pump, and then this is the 110 volt circuit for the light fixture. So today I'm only going to mess with this. The light fixture I'll get uh, do some other time. So I got to take this panel off right now so I can see what's behind there and see where these lines are. Figure out how much uh, flex conduit I need and then I can get started uh, once I get the uh, pieces for that. All right, so I've got the face plate off now and you can hear the pump still going. I'm not touching anything in there. I've still got the power on to this. So uh, right now I'm just doing some investigating to see what I'm gonna do. Uh, so you can see pretty simply, um, right here are my two line outs. Uh, these, are, these are gonna be my load lines and they go into this conduit here. So this is the conduit I'm going to need to remove and, uh, uh, and then move over to the, um, uh, the, the timer. So uh, the wires come in, as you can see, from the house right down here. They come up into this panel here and then we have the GFI uh, light fixture and then the, um, uh, the uh, circuit for, for the pump. So if I, when I do this, I will bring a, um, I have uh, the 10 amp or 10 gauge uh, uh, wire that has uh, white, black, and ground. If I will use that, I will tie the ground into the ground, obviously, and then uh, the white and black into this and bring it over to the, the panel here and wire them in. Uh, it should be a fairly simple installation. Now I'm going to preface this all by saying I am not an electrician. Uh, I do not claim to offer any kind of electrical advice. Uh, and I would say that uh, if you're not comfortable working with electricity, you should definitely hire a licensed contra uh, electrical contractor to do your work. Um, in my case, I've done uh, enough electrical work, something this simple. I don't, I don't need a contractor to worry about. Um, so, and I just happen to have one next door. So if I get, uh, if I get into some trouble uh, where I'm not sure what I'm doing, I can uh, always give him a call and he'll come over and give me a hand. Um, but this is gonna be very simple. I don't see really any challenges here. Uh, and uh, so once I get uh, the required conduit parts and, and whatnot, um, I'll come out and get started and uh, I'll show you, uh, show you how I'm progressing. Okay, so I've got all the power turned off. Power tester is confirming such. Nothing in here is hot. Everything is off. We have no power. 
let's get some. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bracket off of this cable here and I'm going to take the line one and line twos out of the breakers here and get this conduit here over here and this is where I'm going to install uh, the box. So I'm going to try not to have to mess with this one and just have it come around this way uh, but we'll see how that goes. Hopefully there's enough uh, flexibility there for that to happen. Um, so that's the first step. Um, all right, so run into problem number one. Uh, that is that this flex conduit and adapter are three quarter inch. And of course the holes in here are half inch. Um, so I'm gonna have to go and get uh, an adapter there to fit the three quarter inch conduit into a half inch hole. Um, shouldn't be a huge problem, but uh, uh, I, I'll be able to finish it and then come back and tidy that up uh, afterwards, I think. But uh, that is problem number one. So here's where we're at. Uh, we've got the cable removed from here. And we now have added this cable right here down through that conduit uh, across and into timer and then the cables out to the pump are now also in the timer now again I have to get a I have to get a uh, an adapter to turn that three quarter inch threaded end into a half inch um, but I can do that just a little bit so now it's time to strip these wires attach them back to the circuit breaker and also to the ground and then on this side, we've got some jumpers, we've got these wires to attach, and then the grounds to right there. Uh, and then we should be pretty much ready to go. Here's where we are. So I have the ground added. I have line one and two added. Those are coming out of this cable here in this conduit. Coming into here. And we have line one into COM1 and line two into COM2. Both are jumpered over into the timer. Then we have in normally on one and two going out into this and then back out to the pump. So the only thing left to do is to get the adapter for this and fix that, which I can do um, in just a little bit. And then put the base plate on here or the, the uh, cover on there. And then power it up and see what happens. Hopefully I don't blow anything up. All right, so I have restored power to the box. I haven't put the uh, base plate on yet, uh, but I've restored power. And as you can see, I have also flipped the circuit up, uh, which has now provided power through this to this line. And you can see we do in fact have power. And if I hit this switch, you'll hear the pump come on. And there's the pump. So it is in fact working. Now the last thing to do is uh, put the face plates on and then connect uh, this device here. You can see Wi-Fi is blinking. That means that it is in fact looking uh, for some setup. So let's go through that. Let me just turn the pump off. So you can hear. Okay, so what I'm going to do here on the setup is the first step is to the first step is to log in to your Wi-Fi here and look for I don't think you can see that, but it's, uh, it says Eco. All right, so we're going to log into that. That will obtain an IP address, and it will say connected. All right, so now I am connected to the Wi-Fi of this box. The next step is to open my app, my Wyon app. Did I install it? 
Did I install it? I did not. I'll install it and I'll get it. All right, so I've opened the Wion app after reconnecting to Wi-Fi here. It says, uh, add a new device, plug your device into the outlet, turn it on, lights will blink, connect to the ECO, what, whatever dot new number there, which I have already done, and press here to use your Wion outlet. So let's see if it looks and find the router. It is looking. So my, uh, my GoPro died, the battery died on it, so uh, while we were waiting for the connection, I had to actually switch to my iPhone to make it happen. The Android phone never made the connection, but uh, once, you, once it finds the Wi-Fi network, you select which one you'd like to join. It asks you for your zip code. Uh, I'm assuming that is for um, the follow the sun type of activity where, you know, dusk to dawn type of timing. Um, and then uh, asks you for the credentials to join your network, and then it gives you the congratulations screen. Oh, and it also asks you for the name. So you can see here, I've added mine here. It's called Pool Pump. Okay, so if I, and you can also see that now the Wi Fi light has stopped blinking. Okay, so uh, I have, while I was waiting, I went ahead and put the panel back on here, back on here. I also tested my uh, the light fixture on that circuit, so everything seems to be working just great. Um, so now, if I go to here, I should be able to do something. Let's find out. Aha! It worked. And you can see the power light came on. Perfect. And I should be able to turn it off from here as well. Absolutely perfect. All right. So this uh, this was the installation. Um, so a couple of things uh, that, um, you know, I just... You know, pet peeves of mine, I guess. Um, the uh, installation did not work on my Android, and that's uh, that's um, you know a problem. Uh, luckily, I had an iPhone to use. Uh, not everybody's going to have that. I don't know why it didn't work, uh, but it, it got to the point where I was looking for routers, and it just kind of stayed there. I reset it a couple of times. That didn't seem to fix the problem. But as soon as I took my iPhone out. Uh, that seemed to work. So Android users beware. Uh, it seems like there may be a, a bug in there somewhere. Um, the other the other thing is that there is absolutely nothing on this panel. Uh, there's no ability to change the schedule without the app. Um, you know, so I can turn it on and off, but that is all I can do. So um, you know, that's not necessarily a huge issue, but. Um, you know, if I, you know, if I don't have my phone, at least I can turn it on and off. I guess I can say that. Uh, the uh, antenna is nice and small, and it is plenty powerful enough to hit my Wi-Fi, which is on the other side of this wall in the room there. Um, so, you know, it's pretty easy to install. Again, I would say if you're not uh, proficient with electricity, you may want to consult an electrician to get that installed. Uh, I'm sure if an electrician watches this, he'll probably, he or she will probably, uh, um, cringe a few times in the way I install it, but uh, I think it's uh, installed properly. Nothing uh, is shorted. Everything is wired correctly. Um, so uh, I think I'm all right. Um, I did have to put um, that uh, washer on the top here so that uh, the, the, the thing can't just come off. Uh, now, once I screwed these in here, um, then, you know, that really holds this on. It's really pretty stable now. But uh, I, I, just to make sure, I went ahead and put a washer on that on that hook there, um, so that it went uh, it went fine. But this is uh, this is what I have uh, now. The next thing I'm going to do is connect it up to my the rest of my smart home and use Alexa to be able to turn it on and off and that sort of thing, and set up the timer so it runs a, a couple of ten hour or a five hour shifts a day. Uh, but that's it. That is the Y on um, timer uh, outdoor. Uh, 110 to 220 timer. Have a good day.